Hey guys, my name is Jason from Soil of the Land, and today's gonna be a little different video. You know, as you know, we got bees. Lorraine took a kind of like a crash course on kind of beginning beekeeping at our local uh, county is offering it. So that might be a good option for you guys if you're looking to get into bees. Uh, it was very low cost. And a part of that is that they assign us a mentor. Today we're doing a hive inspection. And David, our bee mentor, is coming out. And I figured it'd be cool to have the camera roll in and just to kind of be a fly on the wall. Well, actually, a bee on the wall? No, go ahead. Yes. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Just get it to where it starts really billowing. Maybe even flaming. Yeah, that'll be good because the last time I ran out. <laughs> As you move forward, I would go with a, a bigger and a little better quality smoker if I were you. Oh, okay. So as you go up into the bees, just keep doing that and okay. it should it should be. And that'll last a long time that way. Okay. Using wood pellets. This looks great. And uh, things that are more solid will last even longer. Once you get that started, you can put wood pellets or chunks of fiber, like, like you put in a fireplace. Yeah, okay. And uh, that'll burn even longer. How long have you been having bees? Nine years. Nine years, okay. And how many hives do you have now? I have right at 30, a little over 30. Wow. Three, oh three different yards, two in North Carolina, one in South Carolina. Just give, give them a little, little smoke in the entrance. Okay. Just let them know you're coming. Kind of disorienting the guard bees for just a little bit. Because they're the first ones that they're going to come back out at you. I didn't have one and I... They were all hanging out around the um, around the ears of the frame, and so I couldn't. I was like, I'm gonna pinch them. Okay. Check your lids. Make sure your queen's not on there. Oh, good idea. I don't see her. She has a red dot. So I don't see her. And then I did put these beetle traps. And when I checked it yesterday, uh, last week, I didn't. They, we didn't catch anything. Let's check this beetle trap first. I'm really glued it down. I got one. I got one beetle. There you go. A beetle and a spider. The first thing I, I want to do is just check to see if they've drawn out this comb because these are empty, okay. and I want to see if they've. Um, filled them up. It's going to take them a while to draw out some comb. Okay. So you have uh, some space here. Oh. And you have some space here. Okay. So when you when you have finished in your hive, what you'd like what you'd want to do is take and I, I I I don't push against the top bar as much as I push against the ears. Okay. The side bar. I, I I push them tightly together. Oh, okay. Like that okay. and then come back and equal distance give the same amount of space on on each 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 side okay. and that way they're all tightly together that way they can't build their comb in between as much okay. and so then when you're getting started this morning push them all as far as you can Ooh, I like that, that way. tool better <laughs> and then pull this one away and that gives you room to pull it out Got because it. one day these are going to be full of bees and when you go to pull them out you you don't want to pull them out beside each other where you're rolling them up against the edge and squishing them and maybe squishing your queen. Right now, you don't have that problem. Okay. Let's see if I could do that with this tool. Yeah, I, uh, I think I need that tool. <laughs> we'll and, have to and, go and get that I, one. I'll show you one thing about your, your hook. I, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but the whole purpose in this one is to, to hook it like that. Oh, okay. And I think can, that's what my dad was doing when we first got the nukes, because I wasn't able to lift them with my fingers. It's, still, it's like a learning to get used to these gloves. Yeah. Um, looks like they haven't even touched this one. But I'm just gonna give me some room. And then... Probably use some more wax on that. Actually, I didn't put any wax on that. I should I should roll the wax on there. Okay. So there's, they haven't even started on this one. I was waiting for them to draw out the comb for these empty ones to put my super on. So... Yeah. So I should do that? It, it's, it, they're not ready for a super yet. Okay. So until these are 80% full? Well, you, you don't have to, this time of year, you don't have to wait until it's 80%. Most of the time, that's a good rule of thumb. But uh, they're only, I, they're, there's only 50% or 40% now. So you have quite a ways to go before okay. you need a super. Okay. Mm, 
There's bees. Okay, well I thought they drove I thought they had some on this one, but I guess not. That's Adding some wax maybe to it, it was we'll, the next we'll help encourage them to do that. Okay, I'll I'll do that. They'll move. Just okay, they'll move. wiggle wiggle it a little bit. Oh, okay. Say get out of my way. Okay. They'll move. I guess what scares me is like it looks so brown. No, it's th this is only a year old comb here or or less. Okay. Um, so what am I, it looks like honey to me. And is that a drone bee because it's a big yes, bee? Yes, it is. Okay. So, so with this honey, there is, there is, what is this, these, um, filled cells here? That's pollen and honey mixed together, which makes bee bread. Oh, uh, okay. So, so all of the glistening, of course, is nectar. Okay. And then, if you don't mind, if, okay. if, if you um, hold it, okay, you can let go. Okay. If you hold it this way, with, with your back to the sun, it helps you see uh, much better. Oh, okay. So Good this one nice. is, you have it? Yep, I got okay. it. All right, so this one is, Oh, Multicolored bee bread. You can see it a whole lot better. Yes. And then you see all the glistening is nectar where they're making honey there. They'll dehydrate that when it gets down to 18.6% uh, 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 moisture content. They'll cap it over and then they'll have their honey. But right now they're using that. They'll move it around all throughout the hive, use it. They also mix it to make bee bread um, along with pollen and enzymes. They use it, mix it to make the propolis, which is the bee glue, which is on the edges, mm -hmm. so that they move it around and use it for all sorts of things. So this is the propolis. It's not wax right here where my thumb is. That's right. That's right. So could I scrape off a little bit and eat it? Yes, you may. Oh, it and tastes, look, they're capping it. It tastes horrible. Oh, it tastes horrible, but it's really good for it's, you. It's good for you. Okay. Okay. So what happens if I accidentally drop this frame? This is my biggest fear, and. I, like what would happen? All the honey, all the nectar. No, there, 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 there's no brood on there. there. There's no queen on there. Those queen, those bees will make their way back into the hive. Um, okay. You'll just have to make sure that your your cuffs of your pants are oh. tight because they want to crawl up your legs. Okay. So what's going on here? This looks. They just haven't started working on it yet on that side. Okay. What you can do, and what I'd suggest you do, is turn that frame around. Oh, okay. So this one is this is facing the brood chamber right now, or the the, the brood nest. If you turn it around and they'll start working on this one a little bit faster. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm up so I'll put it's okay to put it this way then. It is. And oh. and uh, if you want to set it down here for just a second. Yes. I don't want to crush any bees. The propolis you were you were referring to, if you'll take your hive tool be the one that drops your frame and just scrape it off like that Ooh, and a hive beetle came off oh that's good and bad um, so th this way you can get your ears back together tightly because oh, okay. this is what's keeping them yes. apart and this is what you don't want them building a whole bunch of onto if you can take that and and just get that off well there's your propolis right there and I, can I usually take that in the house and eat that absolutely and I um, I usually keep two two containers one for wax like this that I scrape off okay. put it in one container put propolis in the other and you can use both for a lot of good things the top frames here the top bars you can scrape the XX wax excess wax off of if you'd like to um, if you don't always have to okay all right, all right. Along the way, along the way, bees will be coming in that didn't didn't know they were smoked. These were gonna, are going to get tired of you being on them. So along the way, just give them a puff or two, just to kind of keep keep them disoriented just a little bit. Now th that's what this ah, is for, okay. so that I you turn, that you kind of pop it loose just a little bit. And now, see if, if you wiggle them around, you will rarely. And then now you just lift it up like this okay. and you don't have to get your gloves involved with uh, getting them. Oh, okay. So there's a lot. Oh, this is such a great idea to have the, the sun on your back because I could see it so much better now. So I see the larva and I see a couple ages here, yeah. like small ones, big ones. I don't see any. Um, 
they're, they're going to have a cap over them, right? If they're older? Yes, after they're eight days old. Oh, wait. There, there's a cap there, but that's a drone cell, right? It is. Okay, and then this is the bee bread? Yes. So you see the band. So this is it's like a rainbow. Yeah. The brood, brood is here. Okay. And the larva's in the middle. The bee bread is here, and then they put a band of honey across the top. Oh, mm. yes. I see it. Here's a drone. They're, um, the, the bees are very calm. That's good because this was the hive that was not calm when I first pulled them out of the nuke. But they're great. They're can you great. tell the different ages? I don't know if, if you can, can see with the camera oh, yes. or not, but you can see from the outside to the inside as the larvae are smaller and then they get larger as you go toward the middle. Yes. She kind of lays in a ring, almost like a rainbow, one layer on top of the other as she goes around. And then she'll go hunt for empty cells that uh, sometimes eggs don't take. Something happens, they'll pull the larva out. They'll even cannibalize it for protein. Uh, but then she'll find that cell once they finish cleaning it out. And then she'll lay in it. Okay, I don't see any day old, but I see some. Oh, yeah, I do. There's a little grain of rice. There you go. There's Okay, I do see two. Did they look... Um, healthy like healthy larvae they look white to me yes, absolutely okay they good. Look great. it's hard to see with this veil i'm like is it white or is it yellow and and it's it's estimated that you need one cell of bee bread for every cell that has a larva in it so there's quite a bit it's of about bread. a 50 50 mix and you have that on that frame it looks oh, very good. good okay so do i just do this you can okay. um now, th this is where this tool can be a little bit awkward and where, yeah. by now, I would have had it by its ears. Oh, okay. If it is, yeah. Oh. I just use the tool to pull it out. Oh, okay. And sometimes, and then put it back in. And then if I'm holding it, manipulating it, looking at it for very long, I do like that. Looking at it like that is great. Holding it down at an angle like this, mm -hmm. as you're looking across it and downward just a little bit with the sun to your back, will help you see that queen a whole lot better. Oh, you'll okay. see her moving around if she's on there. I don't see. Is she more active than the rest at this point right here? More active? You know, moving around more. Oh, sometimes she, she, she'll run from the sunlight. She doesn't like oh. sunlight at all. And so wherever okay. you start, she'll usually keep moving away from you. And, yeah. Yeah. So this side, on this side, um, it looks like there's just bee bread. Yeah, I don't see any eggs or anything But there. They, they're in the way, so what if they moved out of the way? You can blow on them. Oh, oh, there's all the day-old larva. There I wouldn't go. doubt it if the queen's here because there's literally day-old larva. So there is little, but are they laying down or are they standing straight up? Go ahead. Now those are eggs. Those are all full of eggs and, and they're like two days. They're on their second day they're because the they're starting to lay. Yes. You can also press down on the bees and that'll help them. They'll make them move. Oh, this is full all of eggs, isn't it? full of eggs. That's okay. great. Okay, so now I'm just going to scrape off the propolis. Well, no. Yes, just uh, uh, don't leave it out too long with this wind. That that uh, brood will get chilled pretty quick. Okay, so should I just put it right away? Put it back. I, I wouldn't leave it out too long if I were you. Oh. You can scrape that off next oh. time. Oh, okay. It's not badly built up. In this breeze, they've probably been out long enough. They're very young, oh, young okay. larvae. Yeah, it's called chill, chill brood, and the, they maintain their nest at right about 93 to 95 degrees all the time, and uh, so it yeah, takes it's, it's it, it takes it all out of them quickly. So, how long should a hive inspection take on a on a chilly day like this? A hive like that, five minutes. Oh. Five minutes? I think we've been here for like. Yeah, a well, it's while. okay for for training and video and other reasons. If you're not as used to it, other reasons. Sometimes you run into some issues and it takes a lot longer. Okay. I usually try to keep a cover uh, close by that I can just kind of I can keep on top of it. Oh, while oh, you're excuse doing me, that. like okay. partially, like I have a smaller cover and I can I can move it over as I work and and keep them kind of undercover. If, if, if it's too hot, too chilly. Should I scrape this off too? Yes, I would. And is this something I don't want to get smeared all over my gloves because they'll come after me later? Or they don't Oh, care? no, no. Okay. Wax gets everywhere. 
It's hard not to track it into the house. Okay. Yeah. Don't wash your utensils. Don't ever let it go down the drain, you know, to any... Oh, uh, okay. So when they stick their butt up like that, they are communicating. Yes. What are they saying? Well, she has a nasonoff gland, and she's basically letting the others know everything's okay, we're good, um, y'all are good to come on in, there's no big problem here, the queen's still around. She's expressing that the pheromones are, are fine. There are some larvae in the holes, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where uh, a, a completely solid brood pattern is ideal. This is, this is great. This is, this is a 9.9 .9 out of 10. And they have just pulled a few, a few of those uh, capped brood out, or pulled a few of those larvae out, mm -hmm. and then she has to start all over again in those few cells. If you were to come in here and see a lot, like as many holes as you saw caps, um, then you say okay, I might have a problem. Okay, because I did see some holes and I was like, well, how do you know at what point is it, oh, it's windy, is it um, shotgun pattern? No, you're fine. Okay, here. so this is okay. And then you Which... see on the outside how the young stuff is, she's filling in everywhere she can. Uh, okay. Okay, so there's not going to be a frame of day old and then another frame of like five day old. It's just wherever she can find a hole. Right. Well, no, it, it can be both, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah. Because, and I want to show you one more thing. Just, yeah. just um, Okay, now these are plastic frames and plastic foundation. Okay. And a lot of people will tell you they don't like plastic foundation. They say that the bees won't draw it out um, like they do if you had a sheet of wax. But you can see they have. And they, they do just fine with it. If this was wax, if like foundation sheets of wax, mm -hmm. um, when you turn it like that, I've had them, oh. the, the entire wax swings down and drops to, drops down on your feet. they're so heavy. Right. Okay. So plastic, there, there's a lot to be said for plastic, but at the same time, as you can see, on these plastic frames, because there's not enough wax on them, they're hesitant to start drawing them okay. out. And so th there's, there's a give and take with almost everything in beekeeping. Yes. Okay. So I have some beeswax. It's for like soap making and stuff. Could right. I rub that on there? It is, if, I, as long as it's 100%. I, I would be a little bit careful about any beeswax I've bought. Okay. Because I, I just wouldn't know the source of it. But oh, okay. yeah, it won't take you long to acquire. And again, you do however you like, but this, oh, this yeah. works very well. Another, another trick you can do is go along and pop each one on each side as you get started. And now they're all loose, and you don't have to do that each time. But that's that's all up to you. Save the propolis. I don't know what happened to it. I don't either. Did the wind get it? <laughs> I think oh, the, wind the wind got, got it. Oh, Ooh, what's that? That's oh, it's just moisture from the smoker. Okay. There we go. Now here's one uh. where. You might smoke those bees off, scrape okay. that wax off while it's down there, okay. and then pull it out. Okay. Not too close, it'll burn them, right? It shouldn't. Oh, the pine okay. needles makes a nice, cool smoke. You just... Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes it look easy. And then just pop it over here, and they'll crawl off of it and go where they need to go. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you don't have to be that gentle. <laughs> So did I pull this frame yet? You I did, did the not. black one you last. Did not. No. Okay. Oh, they're starting to get a little angry. Well, it's it's about being in there so long. Oh, okay. In the colony so long. Uh, this it just looks so dry. This brown comb, mm -hmm. like compared to the first one that I pulled out. Yeah, because the first one was new, a little bit newer wax. This is a little bit older wax. Oh, I see her now. Okay, so she's on that side. So she's on this frame, but I didn't see anything on the other side, but she she might have been busy on this side. I just see bee bread. So she's only going to lay as, as much as she decides she wants to lay. And I see, I see larva in oh, here. Oh, you do? Okay, I don't know. Okay, I do see older larva. So hard to see that day old larva, but I do see older larva, which is good too. 
at what point do they have the purple eyes? Did Those are drones. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this one back then. Okay, uh, do you want to hold it while I scrape a little yes. more of this wax off? You, yeah. can, you can set it down and let me know when you have it tightly. Oh, okay. I got it tight. Okay. We'll try to clean this up a little bit more. How many times have you been stung? <laughs> 8,000 maybe. 8, <laughs> I, I don't have any idea. <laughs> and then turn it around. Oops. Oh, they are not happy about that. No, no, no. You're not going to make them happy, but it's, it's like children. I still see your queen here. Okay, we're going to scrape the bottom. Oh, the bottom. Oh, okay. So turn it on its end. I still see the queen. She's fine. So I'm going to... You got it? Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Clean this bottom off for you a little bit here. So why don't we want the bottom um, to have any? Well, as as comb starts building up in places that you don't want it, it, it makes the over time, over over the season, it'll make the colon of the hive more harder to manage for you, harder to manage for you. And it clogs up places that uh, you don't want clogged. And so as you clean as you if you clean as you go, it's sort of like keeping your kitchen clean as you're cooking. Then you don't have as much mess to have to deal with later on. And they made this because I didn't squish the frames together. Is that right? Well, partly and partly because they just want to put comb somewhere and they're not liking your... So let me squeeze some of this together and, oh, okay. and just to show. If when you go to rub it on, just do like this. And like I say, this doesn't work as well what because... What if I heated it up? Um, if you heat it up and use like a little brush and then paint it on, okay. that, that works great. Oh, uh, but if you, if you have it in a hard form and then rub it on like that, just like a, an eraser sort of, you'll, you'll coat the wax onto the okay. uh, edges of the cells and it works pretty well. Okay. okay, now see this is a little more of a shotgun pattern, but she's filled it full of uh, larvae. You see all the white glistening larvae in there. Oh, okay. So that, that is a frame full of brood. Right. But this time of year, there's plenty of sources for them to get it, okay. and they'll get it as they want it. And if you're getting into hives quickly and out quickly, okay. it's not the end of the world just to leave it. Okay. But well, I might, because the next time I do a hive inspection, maybe next week, instead of just inspecting all the frames, maybe I could just clean them up. Sure. Okay, so... Well, that one, they've see the new wax on that. They've yeah. drawn that frame out. Oh, good. Do you see any eggs in there? She started laying in it yet. Oh, Sometimes um, she'll start before the, the wax actually finishes. One thing you can do if you have them that are crawling around in the cells, if you're worried about them, is the little Q-tips that are on sticks, oh, okay. wooden sticks. Yeah. You can just keep a few with you. Take a, a, take the Q-tip part, stick it down in the nectar or honey to make it sticky, then stick it down in the cell where the hive beetle is. That'll stick to the hive beetle and pull it out, okay. and then you can. I don't see any eggs okay. in there. Well, it might be too soon. They, they may be putting honey in that one. Oh, okay. My suggestion is to encourage them now, almost force them to start drawing on some of these other frames. Mm -hmm. So she has used all of her usable comb and filled it all up, right? Mm -hmm. We've determined that. Yes. It all looks good. Oh, yes. Her pattern is great. She, she wants to lay. She's doing a fantastic job. Now you need to try to give her, since you don't have any more drawn comb, that's uh, ready to go in there for her to immediately lay in, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to encourage them to try to build this other out faster. Okay. And so what you can do is move one of these over and put this one in between it, okay. and that will force them to, to make this a, a frame where she can lay on because it'll be in between the two ah. groups. If you were doing this early in the year, late in the year when it's cold out, you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want to try to separate this brood nest but this time of year, it's fine to do that. Okay. So you can move this one, and then you can take one of these and do the same thing. You can move it over here and kind of split the brood chamber, and that'll force them okay. to draw wax on that. So once this, these get well populated, then you would do the same thing with the last frame? Yes, yes. Just but how, how much later, at what point? When you see it like this one? I would say, yeah, when you, this one, I would call it 50% drawn, and uh, so, or could she just rotate this because there's nothing on the other side? No, I would rotate it as well. I would do both. Rotate I would, this I would, one? I would, I would move it in and rotate it like you did this other. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. They, they build from the center out. And 
So if you can kind of slide it back towards the end. Yeah. So you see they will draw on that cone, on, the, on, that, on that foundation, right? But they'll draw even better on it if you have enough wax oh, on them yeah. where they don't have to bring in all the wax and make all the wax. Yeah, and they can use here. some of the wax. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Put it right in between this one, right here. I, I, I would put this one in between these two. Yeah. Oh, what about this one? I Just would leave it to the outside for Oh, right leave now. it for yeah, the outside. Don't, okay. don't do two at the same time. Don't oh. do two on each end, on one end. Don't do two on one end at the same time. That's a little bit too much. Drop you. Okay, so put it here like this. Yes. Okay. And then put this empty one on the outside. Oh, I see. Oh, that should work. Good. Okay. So I'm missing the frame. It's on the ground over here. Oh, okay. And so if I were you, I would put it in between two of these. Okay. This one here, put it here? Yes. Uh, I don't think I have enough room. There we go. All right. Okay, and then we're going to scrunch them together. Yeah. Really give it a mash. Really, you know, get them tight, as tight as you can. As they're in there longer, they build up more propolis. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be harder one. to do that. Scoot this one too? Yes. Anything you do here though, dropping anything or knocking around, you're going to start irritating these bees. So just keep that in mind. Oh. So, this is a weird question. So this wax here, could I use it to rub on the frames on this one, or is it only these bees wax that they would no, be like? No, it, it'll be just fine. Okay, because yeah. I don't know if it has like a certain scent and they're like, this is foreign, this belongs to the other hive. Oh no, it, okay. it works fine. You just want to be careful when you when you buy other people's wax. Oh. They, what, you don't know what kind of disease they had in their wax or okay. anything like that. Okay. Some things you buy online are mixed with paraffin and things like oh. that. Okay, because I have um, feeders on right now, do I want to close this vent? No, no, you're, you're not having, this time of year, you're not having any robbing issues. Also, look at your feeder. When did you fill that? Yesterday. Oh, you did? So yeah. they've, they've taken half of that already? Yeah, okay. they'll take it. I have to refill it every three days. Okay. Well, there may come a point where they stop taking it, and at that point, you would take it off of there. Um, they're getting enough nectar elsewhere. But on these rainy days, it's good to have yeah. it on there because, okay. you know, even, even though we have a lot blooming right now, the rain will wash the nectar off the petals and um, it, it takes it a while to build back up again. So even though you look out and you see all these beautiful flowers and trees, yeah. and, um, they may not be getting much out of it. We have, yeah, we have so much. We have the blackberries. If you notice the top, if you, if this, this way or this yes. way, right? So that, that gives it some ventilation. So I left it with the ventilation open. Okay. guys are as calm. That's how you put the lid on right. No, you didn't. That's no, this is down, upside down. down. Upside down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that's why it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'll be stuck anyway. They, they try to fill their gaps in any gap. They don't like uh, daylight coming into their hive, so they'll fill up gaps. And they'll try to use that for also for the hive beetles too, like to trap them, right? They will trap hive beetles in purple. Oh, I them. forgot to put the. That's speaking right. of the hive, hive beetles, beetle. there's one right here. Is that it? Oh, yep, there's one right here. But as you said, they, they have trapped them, and now you've released them, right? You're, you've, you've broken them out of jail, yeah. so you'll see them running. Okay, so let's see how many hive beetles we got. One. one. We got one. 
In our part of the country, you're going to see some hive beetles. So later, the, later on in the year, the more you're going to see. Oh, I smashed you! Another thing about hive beetles too, you have to keep in mind, is the ground around. I, I think it has. People say, well, keep your hives in the shade, keep your hives in the sun, on and on. But uh, if I think it's the ground surrounding your hives that's most critical to how many hive beetles you have because when the, the hive beetle they, they lay their eggs in the hive and then the the larva crawl out of the entrance and actually fall down onto the ground oh. and they bur bury burrow themselves into the ground where they pupate and then they emerge as an adult hive beetle and they fly back into the hive so if your ground around you is let's say concrete they can't bury down. If it's rocks, they can't bury down. If it's in the middle of the of the summer and the ground is really hard and dry, they can't bur burrow down very well. So that's why I think sun has more to do with it. Whereas a shady area, the ground around it is uh, a lot softer all the time and, and more conducive yeah. to them uh, raising their offspring. We get a lot of rain so too. So it's more beneficial to have in the sun. Yes so and no. To, to some degree. When, when you're out here in June and July and August, you're going to wish it was in the shade. And also, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. also uh, too much heat has an effect on the brood. It has an effect on the comb itself uh, mm. being soft. It, they have to thermoregulate. So you'll see, you'll see them out here just by the hundreds and thousands trying to, trying to get out of the, like if you're in a crowded room and, there, and there's too many people, you want to get outside and get some fresh Absolutely. air. That's what they'll do. And then they'll, you'll see them fanning, trying to draw air through there when it's out here in the heat and uh, also it can affect the drones huh. and so there, there's a lot of things so with beekeeping there's a give and take with almost everything pros and cons so what do you do in the summertime <coughs> this is yeah, you me put out. shade on can you is it I, beneficial ideally having the morning sun come and, and hit the front of the entrances oh, so and get them started early is is mm -hmm. ideal and then later in the day when in the heat of the day if you can have some shade on them as the, as the sun's the moving sun, around right, right. that's perfect uh, some people okay. put their their hives under um, coverings right. they'll put them in little buildings they'll have a, a some kind of a shade over them and all those things can help okay so i have a question okay. yes how can i tell the difference i mean i probably could see if i took it inside between propolis and wax well, you'll start on, you'll start recognizing it. The, uh, uh, you probably don't want me grabbing the propolis if you're going to eat it. But you can get some more. But um, so uh, you'll start noticing the difference, and then the texture of it, and um, you'll just you'll start. It'll just take you a while to get used to it. Okay. Okay. Now this colony looks smaller. Oh, okay. Or, or not as strong. And this one is empty. Okay, and they've already drawn out, or they're starting to. Yeah, they're working on it. Okay. And again, a little time saver is if you just use your tool and, and pop free all of them. I did, yeah, I did. did well, you? you guys were okay. talking. I didn't okay. do that, but I... Okay. That's a good frame of fruit. Oh, what's that? That's just a little... What happened there? Wax. A it's filled with honey? No, it's just a little, it's, they're just putting some comb up there. Okay. That looked weird. Okay, so this is all capped brood. Okay. Or not all, but a lot of capped brood. Oh, look, at there's a bee emerging there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a bee emerging. So they'll eat their way out of the... They do, yeah. Okay. Chew their way out. It looks like that's what he's doing. So he's just chewing his way out. I don't know if you can see it, like right there. You have a good eye for that. And as far as the them getting chilled, as far as them being in the wind, oh, okay. uh, it doesn't affect the cap brood nearly as badly as it does the uncapped brood. Okay, so put this down. so afraid I'm gonna drop it. It's quite heavy. When a bee emerges, she actually leaves behind a cocoon. So when an egg is, an egg is three days, uh, then it becomes a larva, and then after eight days that's capped, and then she becomes a pupa. And during, between that larva and pupa stage, she spins. 
inside and makes actually a cocoon. And those cocoons build up over time. So the bees come in and they'll clean those things out and they, they'll actually shine up. You'll see inside the, the cells that are ready to be laid in, they look shiny in the bottom where the, cleans have cleaned, the bees have cleaned those out a lot. And then the queen comes along and looks and makes sure she's, she sees one. She's like, yep, that's a good one. And then she sticks her yeah. little bottom down in there and lays it in. Okay, so this right here, that's what I sent you a picture of. And I was like, this brood looks really bad. Like, I think they're diseased and sick, but this is not brood. That's honey. That's capped honey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you see, you have quite a bit of propolis here and here. Yes. Uh, if you want to scrape some scrape off. That. How do I, I don't know how I can get a good grip on it. Well, uh, you can use this, that. this box if you like. And then I'm just afraid. What are you doing? I'm, I'm scraping off the propolis. Now, because these are from a nuke and it's not mine, I mean, it, I didn't raise turn, these. Turn it 180 degrees. And that way you can, you're can you not having to reach across it. Turn it all the way around like that. Okay. Now you can get I just that. don't know how to hold it. Like this? Yeah, you, you'll get used to it. You'll, be, you'll drop a few and then you'll... Okay. you'll uh, Okay, so could I eat this propolis or? Should... Yes. Okay. Yes. I just didn't want. No, it's it's it's, uh, it's very very good for you. It just it's like a lot of things that are good for you, it just tastes bad. <laughs> well, we already had our smoothie today, but otherwise we would have put this right in our smoothie. Yeah. And that's the thing about raw honey. The thing that people need is it has little bits of propolis. It has little bits of pollen. It has you know the the honey enzymes. All those things together are what's good for you. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, and I don't remember which way it went. Well, and th there's a little trick that I do, and I don't know if any of you have a uh, pin or not, but I, don't uh, have a pin. I, I usually mark my frames in some sort of way on on the ends, on, on and I'll always use put those ends toward the front. Okay. Unless I turn it around and then when I come in a, in a hive and I see that there's one turned around I know I did that for a reason and otherwise they're all to the front that way when I go to put them back in I put them in the same orientation I took them out yeah I think I'll do that I'll, I'll bring, remember to bring a marker with me and then just put like a and that you're asking about uh, how to get the propolis off another way is while they're in the in the hive here you can just scrape down right there if you're not trying to save the propolis Oh, okay. Uh, is there a reason why you would save it? To eat it. Yeah, uh, you can sell it if you have enough of it. Uh, also, you use balls of it like that. To, when you put up swarm traps, you uh -huh. rub it around on the inside of the box and that, that's an attractant for them. And then, as Lorraine said, you can eat it. We're gonna eat that, Randy. We're gonna have <laughs> it in our smoothie tomorrow. Well, gonna... I've been trying to save it, but it keeps blowing down here. Oh, we should have bring it. Next time we'll bring, we'll a, bring jar. a jar and one marker. So we're learning here. That's another good frame of brood right there. I, I see it's almost full. Oh, good. I see a lot of uncapped along with the cap. So this one, it looks like they put some of the bee bread in the middle here and then did the yeah. capped brood. So That's some, that bee bread there, you can see how, how crusty it looks. That's a little bit older. So oh. they'll be, um, they, they'll eat their freshest first, it okay. seems to me. and. Um, that sometimes that gets left for last. Now, if you were keeping a journal, yes, which, which is a good to thing do. to start, <laughs> okay. um, start in your mind, start thinking about things that you want to put in your journal. Like, okay, the strength of the colony. I, I use a one to five. I, I say it's a one or a three or a five, whatever. The temperament of the colony. Five being the, the hottest or the meanest. Uh, one, uh, zero being perfect. Uh, I, I put down the weather conditions, I, I, the date, the time, weather conditions, time of year, all the whatever, what anything going on, like we just had three days of rain or it's, it's 86 degrees or whatever. And then um, you, you start noticing things along the way. The more you do it, the more you'll, you'll notice what the combs are doing, what the combs are, are telling you. And then those are the types of things you're gonna put down in your journal. Okay. Um, you're gonna say the, the bees are, uh, are runny, the bees are um, defensive, and, and those types of things. How many, and then a pest, you'll put down pests. Okay. You'll say, I, I saw a dozen hive beetles, or um, things like that.
So this one doesn't have too much. When I first looked at it, when, when you first opened the box, I said it looks like a smaller, a weaker colony. It, it does not now. Oh, they're just hidden in there. Okay. It's not quite, they're not on top of the top bars as much, are they? Maybe you can hold all the propolis for me since it keeps getting blown away. Another thing you notice, you write down in your journal, are the number of drones. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm seeing very few drones. Very, is that bad to see? No, drones? it's not. No, not, not really. It's not bad. It's just something to notice that you're seeing lots of drones or very few drones. I'm so glad that we know that this is bee bread now because I was like, this larva, they're dead. They're <laughs> like, they're just diseased. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Okay, so so write down how many drones that I see. Well, yeah, just... There's a drone cell there. Yes. So you, you say, okay, I saw very few drone cells. That would be your comment. Okay. Or you say, I saw um, many drone cells on each frame, you know, or you, you'll start noticing Should things. Should there be like a ratio? Yeah, uh, usually uh, about 15%, something like that, of drones to worker bees. Okay. And one of the reasons for that, if you start noticing 40, 50% drones, then that means that means a couple of things. That mean, it could mean you have laying workers. That could mean you have uh, uh, they're about to swarm. Yeah, I like your hat. And it goes all the way around like that. Yeah. And and it's firm. Yeah. It's not floppy. So you can buy buy this type of veil for uh, for this type of suit. You can buy that. That's a fencing veil, and then this is called a round veil. Yeah. And there's pros and cons to both. Uh, the fencing veil, you're, you're supposed to be able to no, see so a little bit better. Yeah. Mm. But this round veil kind of protects you all the way around a lot better. Yeah. It's warming up. I don't feel it's as cold as when we first no, started. It's great. <laughs> We've probably been out here for an hour. We probably shouldn't take this long. That's okay. That's why I, I suggested 10 o'clock when we, I, I looked at the weather. I said, oh, well, it'll be just right. To yeah. see when it's warm enough? So like, right, right now, if I were you, if, if if I wasn't trying to keep the propolis, then you can just take and scrape these okay. these ears. Um, that way you're pressing down, you have a good firm surface. Yes, that's what the, but they're in the way. There is an angry one around my ear. She can't lay in that deep red and they're not gonna move it until they need to move it. So it would be nice if all that wasn't in the way, but so they don't move it. They don't get rid of it. Oh, they will, but oh. uh, until they do, she can't lay in there. And then this bottom cell right here with a hole in it. Yes, that's called a queen cup. That might be a good thing to get a picture of. Okay. Um, that's a queen cup, and they'll build those. Some some types of bees, some races of bees, will build a lot more of those than others. What I usually do, uh, you can ignore it or just destroy it. That way, they can't turn it into a queen cell. Okay. But we haven't found the queen yet, so hopefully. Well, they're not there. Yeah. We said we saw a lot of young, young larvae. I, I think you're going to see a queen. Yeah, we did see some young larvae. Yeah. I haven't seen we day old larvae, but, but it's so hard to see that day old larva. It's like. And they love to grab hold of things. So you, you're like one inch away from your veil. Oh. And uh, gonna... they love to crawl up on that veil and then crawl up under it. A little bit more lipstick. Oh, really? They probably licked it off of her. Oh, this is a light frame. Okay. There she is. She's going to try and get away from the sun, probably. She's, big She's a big one. So I wonder if she likes this new comb that they built for her. She loves new comb. She's going to try to land Absolutely. It. But she's looking for a place. I do see day old egg in here. Good. And it might be too day old because it's already starting to lean. Oh, yay. And then they've drawn out on this side, too. Not all the way, but a little bit. Right. So this is a perfect frame here to do to intersperse you know to um, move one over okay. and move this one in its place okay um, and I would turn it around make make the weakest side toward the middle oopsie if I were you so turn it this way I would okay and then put it in here yes okay and I don't think I need to check that one because they're, they're building it out just a little bit yeah. they, they are working on it that's good yeah okay oops Could we expect to get honey like this first year? You'll get honey. It's just a matter of whether you'll get enough for you and them. Come on, move out of the way. Gotcha. It'll be enough for them for sure. I don't think we're gonna harvest any, any of it. Oopsie. Yep, they're very good. Very good Come bees. Come on, go in there. They've let you stay in here on a windy day, a little bit cool. This one was faster, I felt. And yeah, and they, um, they, they're not 
too anxious about any of that. They let you do everything you needed to do and they're very good bees. And this is okay that we leave all of this extra wax on oh, top? Oh, it's going to be, yeah. These, these look so pretty and new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. They, they, uh, they need to get baptized. <laughs> okay.